Hi everyone who has a hive and vinyl kit. Um, this is me, Liberty, sitting in Langport High Street uh, in the new studio, which hopefully will open soon. Um, I just want to run through what you'll get in your kit and the video will continue showing how to do it. Okay, so you'll get your kit like this and inside you should find a felting mat, a mixture of wools, mostly brown, should be yellow, whites, oranges, reds, definitely black, um, some small pieces of coloured felt in greens and pink and blue, a piece of, or two pieces of felt squares like this, um, and we're going to learn how to do a hair and a beehive with the various flowers around it which you can experiment on. Um, you should also have a template with the shapes and a little booklet like this which tells you how to do various little tips and techniques for getting started in needle felting. You should also have two needles in your kit, one with a red tip and one with a black tip. The black is slightly thicker, the red one is slightly thinner, and I tell you exactly when to use each one. Okay, anything else? Oh, if you have some small snip scissors like this, needle um, nail scissors are perfect, um, otherwise large ones will do, but small ones would, would be um, essential really. Um, otherwise, you're ready to get going, and um, I'll come and show you close to what the picture is that we're going to be making. So you can either choose to do the beehive on one piece of felt and the rabbit on another piece of felt, so you have two pictures, or you can do, decide to do it both on one um, and then do your own design on the other piece of felt, it's up to you. Um, once you've finished your project you can frame it, um, or this little thing here I've made into a needle, needle um, book. So you can just cut the felt up into a book shape, like that, that's a book shape, and inside put some leaves of felt for your needles. So that one just has the beehive on the front. So that's also a little pretty thing you can make if you wish to. So without further ado, I think we're ready to start. Okay. On this piece of white felt I'm just going to show you how to do the beehive and the rabbit and then we're going to put some flowers around it as well um, and it's up to you as to if you want to make it into a needle case and do them separately or onto the same picture. If you have a pen or a pencil, I've got an invisible marker but it's quite helpful to just make a rough outline of the shape you want. You should have a template piece of paper in your kit. So, which gives the basic outlines, the rabbit and the beehive. Now we're going to start with the beehive as it's a simpler shape. And you'll need to take some of the coarse white wool, which I put in, in your kits, which looks like a bit like this. Not too much. And I'm going to suggest starting with your black needle, which is the slightly thicker one. I'm just going to prod following the line you've made all the way around, keeping to the edge first. It doesn't matter if it's got discoloured bits because you're going to be covering it with your yellow anyway. If you notice I put my finger up to the line and with the nail so the needle doesn't prod me but also helps me get a clean line. Now I'm going to go all over, gentle prods. You're not, not using large prods that want to go right through the mat. These are just little gentle prods. So that each fibre just about goes through the felt. There we are. You want it nice and podgy looking. And I'm happy with that. Now get your yellows. Um, 
I would have given you some yellow a bit like this. Try and keep it nice and straight and smooth. And a little bit of orange. And I'm going to add a little bit of white as well, I think, to give it a bit more texture. And I've got a darker here and there. And now this is where I'm going to blend it. So it's, they're all lying flat, all lying in the same direction. I'm going to pull out from one end and on top. Pull out from one end and on top. Try not to fold. If you fold, you find it gets all knotted. There we are, until the colours are nicely blended. Still with my black needle, I'm going to hold it above the hive shape and just follow around the top of it like that, the top curve, giving myself a nice neat line, relatively secure. Pull it over and fix it at the bottom. work down the sides trying to keep that shape I've got a visiting fly come on off you go oh, he's going to stay there for a bit there we are now I'm going to move on to my red needle the red tip it's just slightly, slightly smaller, and I'm going to work over the hive in this one. Again, nice short prods. This is the therapeutic bit. You can even sing a song at this bit, if I had one in my head to sing. Going felting, going felting. Nothing like the fleecy feel of wool. Now I've mislaid my scissors. There they are. I'm going to trim off the bottom. There we are. I'm going to neaten my edge a bit. If you feel you want to get a lot of wool pushed through, use your black. If you're doing gentler parts, and you're not wanting to really compress it, use your red. Now you're going to need a little bit of your brown or the darker colours. It's totally up to you what you choose. I'm, I'm taking some of my brown, which I'm going to be using for the, for the hair in the minute, um, a little bit of my brown um, and possibly a little bit of my orange, because that's slightly darker than the yellow. And I'm going to twist them this time. So they're both again lying in the same direction and I'm going to twist them. I'm not blending, I'm twisting. So they look a little bit more like butcher's twine at this point. And then with my black needle, I'm going to fix it about just there, up from the bottom. You want to be tucking it in nicely, twisting as you go. Prod, prod, prod. Try and make it so it is uh, not straight across, but it sort of curves up like a smile either side. This helps give it a nice rounded shape. Snip it off. I've probably got enough in this to do another one. up as much as I can, tucking it in, and one more, another twist, I 
I'm moving over to my red needle. That was slightly, that was slightly too much there. And in it goes. Now these little bees need somewhere to get in and out. So with a bit of dark brown, I'm going to make them a little doorway. A little hole shape. Like I know these beehives sometimes are on boxes or sometimes they come on stands. Mine are going to have little legs. Anytime you want to do a, st a strip in your design, always remember to twist first. That just helps keep it all in nice and neatly together. So that twisting. There you go. Twisting. Da da dum da dum da 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 dum. There we go. We're ready to add some flowers and some bees. Some yellow for your bee. Sure, it's nice and round. You're going to roll it with your fingers here between your thumb and your index finger. This just helps get all the loose fibers from being too fly away. So, you've got a rough ball. Think where you want your bees. There we are. He's coming home. This one, so he's going to be head down, looking, making a bee line, as they say, for the hole. Black, you need a very small bit of black. It's quite potent, this black. So, stretched out, fold it over, give it a twist. Red needle, and give him that little stripe across the back. my head I'm not going to use black I find it a little bit bold I'm going to use a brown um, but it's almost black <laughs> but it's a subtle difference but black works absolutely fine for the heads if you want to just make sure your head's nice and small now we're going to do some wings Generally, you'd think of the wings being white, but if I do do just white on the white felt, it's not going to work. So I'm taking a bit of my white and a little bit of blue. That's it. As you can see, when I say little bits, I'm really meaning little bits. That's right. Roll one. Roll two. add as many bees as you like. I'm going to stop there because I'm now going to add some flowers, I think, and we might have some, some lavender. Now for doing the lavender, you should have some red, a little bit of purple, mauve, and some blue. 
You can use the colours as they are or you can blend them which means that each different flower then is just a slightly different shade and makes it quite interesting. So here we are, I'm blending roughly. That's it. Now, small pieces, rub them between your fingers. This is just one type of flower that I'm showing you. Round the hair, we'll be doing different flowers, which won't involve so much rubbing between the fingers, if you find that tricky. I like to make mine all at once. I know what I'm, um, I've got to play with, so to speak. Right, let's start with that. And start with the top one. I have my black needle. I could make them like little raindrops, really. And a similar pattern to what you'd find on ears of corn, that almost herringbone sort of effect. There's one, and another one over here. Next I'm going to do some leaves. Put in one end and I've twisted. And again I'm going to give these a little curve. Now at this point, if you wish to, I've put in some pieces of felt. Pings and blues. And I thought it would be quite pretty. This is where your nail scissors come into their own. Now 
you can make little flowers almost like forget-me-nots or fever few um, and with a little speck of white you can roll it into a ball and then with your red needle place your flower roughly where you'd like it place your ball in the middle and gently prod your ball in around the edges of your ball if you can so that it still looks circular just like that and you can add a few of those and not only does it give a nice base to the hive it gives another 3D effect to your picture You can really use whatever colour you like for your central ball. Could be yellow again. Even green gives a, a very different effect. So that's to start you off on those. Or you can use some pinks. We might put some pinks around the hair. So that is your beehive. And now to start the hair. We're going to start in a very similar way. We're going to get your brown wool, which should look like this. This is uncombed brown wool, which has just been washed, and it's from Somerset. <laughs> there you are, take a, a generous clump of this. And again, in the same way that we worked round with our white, do you remember our white that we did underneath our yellow? We're going to use the brown for that. So we're going to need our black needle and work round the shape that you've made with your pen. So if you've used a pencil or a pen that doesn't disappear, just a normal one, at this point just make sure you go over that line. Careful to get the nose and chin defined. At this first stage, all you're worrying about is the outline shape and getting a nice base all over. You're not worrying about building up the cheeks or getting the, the full relief shape, just at, yeah, just a nice base. When you realise you've got too much, you snip it off at the bottom, like so. And the sun's come out onto my picture now. <laughs> which is lovely. In fact, I could move it into the sun. Maybe. That's better. Now I'm in the sun, so I hope you can see okay. So we've made the shape of your rabbit. And we're going to keep prodding down. Because this is a much coarser wool. The brown is, is quite coarse. And on the head, I'm going to build it up to give it a little bit of cheek. So making sure I stay inside the initial shape. Imagine it going down where the eye is, out, and then a nice round cheek on top. Just like that. When you're quite happy with your shape, turn to your red needle and continue to prod, and this will make it just a little bit smoother. Again, just think of little prods. I've got my uh, wrist resting on my mat. Um, if you're doing it from the air, you're moving your whole arm and that can tie you out. So I just rest my wrist gently, and then I'm just doing little taps. Helps you give better control as well. So I'm quite happy with that now. I'm going to get a little bit of white. Here we are, a little bit of white. Roll it slightly into a again. 
and this is going to be where his whiskers sort of come out just under his nose there so put it in place Tuck it round. You can always come back to bits later to neaten edges. Now for the nose, you can either do a pink or a darkish brown. I think this one I'm going to use a darker brown. They're all similar to um, the lavender petals, really. And I'm just putting so it just overlaps the top of the white. Now again for the eye, I'm going to start with a little bit of white. A rabbit eye is quite high in the head. There we are. I'm doing it in a sort of triangular shape, so it goes straight up. Imagine a sail on a sailboat. Just like that. And pull it out a little bit at the front. Now with your black. You're going to do a similar shape inside. And I'm going to just put it forward so it looks as though he's looking forward slightly. So I hope you can see that shape okay. little bit of white oh really tight really really tightly now um, that might be even too big it's nice and small that's it so that size can you see and I'm going to put that at the back bit of my eye and it will get smaller as I prod it in. I'm going to add my ears. You should have some yellow coloured felt and cut out two ear shapes like that and prod over them with your brown. I'm just going to have to do them off my mat slightly just to give them a little bit of colour. one. I'm going to leave those end bits on and you'll see why in a minute. You can either have tufty ears or you can trim them. Whoops. Here 
go with one. So I'm just trimming the top bits. I'm leaving those loose fronds at the base. And my black needle, I'm going to fix them. some character. One ear is going to be facing forwards. The other ear I'm going to fix slightly lower in the head facing the other way. A nice alert rabbit. Accentuate where the head and the body join, giving him a nice cheek there. Now we're going to give our rabbit some legs. Take some of the brown, twist it like so, fold it in at the bottom so that, that looks quite big and chunky. And go over it up and down, turning it over regular intervals until it all gets. nicely bound together. When you're reasonably happy and if you're feeling confident <laughs> you can then hold it, move to your red needle and work up and down like that. This gives you a slightly smoother leg if you manage to do this. But do be careful because you can prick yourself very easily. And it goes. The end, if you try and make it slightly curved like that, and see how it's got a slight curve on it, when you come to put it in place, The little feet will stand stand facing forward, pointing forward, which is quite cute. Fix it in place and I've got way too much at the top, so I'm going to trim that off. And tuck it in. Just like that. And another leg. So as we did before, fold it out, double thickness, start with the black needle, up and down, We don't need that much. Trim the top. Now, the second leg, I can either have it facing as though he's an action rabbit or slightly pigeon toed like that, which I think this one can be. That's quite cute. making sure I've got a differentiation with the raised cheek, the shallow neck and then it coming out again for the leg. 
put my way to him. There we go. Now, that's better. I think that white hole was too, mark was too big. Now I'm going to make his hind quarters slightly larger. They seem to have shrunk as I've been working on the leg. Making his his little bottom bit stick out a little. Because I need somewhere to fix his tail. So I've just accentuated what the, sh the original shape I had there. Brought it out a bit. Now, now you'll need some white. First with this white, I'm going to mix it with a little bit of brown. So it's not bright white, but it's just a, a nice mix there. You see, I'm mixing. Um, that's it. Because I feel this bit down the centre of the rabbit here, it's hard to see which bit's his tummy. So I'm going to add this. It's a bit like mixing paints really. I've just made it now into a light brown by adding the white. There it goes. And now he looks as though he's got a fluffy tummy. Again with some white. I'll try and keep this as straight as possible. About that much. Take it in the middle, place it on your bottom where you want the tail to be. Fix it down. Take your scissors and snip. Not too tight, leaves it nice to be a nice, nice bobtail. There we go. Now we have a tail on our rabbit. We're going to put a few flowers around our rabbit as well. If at any point with your felting that you don't like something, you can pull it off. Felting is very, very forgiving. So you can always pull bits out and start again. As you can see, I'm tweaking the nose because I wasn't quite happy with the way that I was looking down towards the nose there. I think what I'll also add with a very thin piece of dark brown is a line coming down from my nose and underneath. Sort of accentuates a bit and bring that in. There you go. Okay, now some flowers. Earlier I was talking about the different coloured felts we had. Um, we did some blue flowers there. We've also got some pink. All petals are different shapes, but you can experiment with simple circles with raggedy edges or something more rose petal shaped like this whatever you feel comfortable with and this pink is very delicate so what I'm going to do I'm going to take a little bit of red Whereas with the white, I just added it with the white circle. This one, I'm going to give the petals a little bit of colour and detail. So I've got my pink and I'm going over it with my red here. This is my red needle because it's quite fine. It 
At this point, it begins to look like one of those Skips crisps, I always think. There we go. Um, and in the middle, I'm going to use a bit of white and a bit of yellow. Mix together. I'll put, put it there on the outside of my rabbit. Like that. You should always also have a little bit of green. If you've got nail scissors or scissors like mine here with a bit of a curve, it, it does help when you're cutting um, leaf shapes because it gives them a natural curl. You can either do this in the green felt or you can just do it with the wool as we did for the lavender but you will need to fix it with a little bit of green so take some green put roughly where you'd like to have them like so And then work down them. The wood on top just fixes it nicely in place. And there we go. Little embellishments you can do around it are little dots of yellow. Like that. And I'm also going to show you one more flower that we can do the other side, which would be something like a tulip. This time we're just going to use the, the wool. So a little bit of red, like that, mixed with your yellow, as much of this as you'd like, and a little bit of white. And when doing a tulip, I like to think of it as a heart shape, really. put it just here since that's where we seem to have the gap in this design. So I'm going to put it in shape. Going down to a point, going up the other side and then at the top there I'm going to pull it down and in. So that goes out that side, that goes out on the left. you end up with a rough tulip shape. If you find that when you mix your colours you didn't use enough of one, mine's actually gone quite white on the outside which I didn't want quite that white, I'm going to add a bit more of my red over that bit. my stem. Always remember to twist. And there we go. So I hope that's given you an an idea of how to get started, some examples of the different flowers you can use um, to make your English garden with your English hair and your beehive. 
do hope you have fun and let me know um, maybe you can send me a picture or two uh, the link should be on the video okay bye